Hey guys, uh, happy Saturday. I hope you guys all had a good week. I know I had a pretty hectic one myself, uh, but I'm glad I'm able to wind down and join you guys for this message today. Um, so today's portions were from Ezekiel chapter 15 and uh, John chapter 15. Both of these passages uh, compare God's people to uh, a vine, like a grapevine. Um, on day nine, Alyssa had a good message about uh, how the vine and its branches have to work together to bear fruit for God. So today I'm going to focus on the other passage, which is from Ezekiel chapter 15. Um, and before we look at the specific verses, uh, let me just give you a little background about what's going on at this point in time. God's been using his prophet Ezekiel to deliver his message to the people of Judah that um, time and time again he keeps rescuing them and um, delivering them from trouble. Um, but they keep turning to their rebellious ways and careless ways every time they're brought out of that trouble. And that, keeps, that seems to be a common trend uh, within the Bible and um, within God's people, including us. And um, in the specific passage, uh, Ezekiel compares uh, the people of Judah to a, um, a useless vine. So this comparison is a little different from other times in the Bible when uh, a vine is used as a metaphor. Usually whenever they use it, they're talking about the fruit and they're focusing on how we can bear that fruit and how we're the branches. Um, but this time there's not even really any mention of the fruit. It's already past that point. Um, we often hear about furniture that's made from mahogany wood or oak or maple, but when's the last time you heard about something made from grapevine wood? Probably never because they don't really use grapevine wood for um, building things. Um, it's too um, it's too soft for, uh, to use, it burns easily, it's not very sturdy. Uh, the passage says, How is the wood of a vine different from that of a branch from any of the trees in the forest? Is wood ever taken from it to make anything useful? And verse 6 goes on. As I have given the wood of the vine among the trees of the forest as fuel for the fire, so will I treat the people living in Jerusalem. Um, and he, they even go on to say that it's too soft to even hang things off of it and to use it as a peg. And I think that's, um, at this point, it's already pretty clear that um, God's made it very apparent that um, the people, his people, have become useless to him. This vine wood is pretty useless. So we might think, why is God choosing to compare his chosen people to such a useless material uh, like this um, vine wood? Uh, and the chapter ends with one final warning uh, where God says that he will make the land desolate uh, because they have been unfaithful. So that's a lot of um, scary talk about wrath and desolation. Um, so that brings me to my next point. How can we avoid that wrath? Uh, how can we be, be, be fruitful? Um, a lot of times we think that just by being part of this grapevine uh, and being part of God's people or like being part of this church that we're entitled um, to um, all the benefits and all the uh, things that come along with it. But we're expected to bear fruit. Uh, and in John 15, Jesus reminds us that the branches that don't bear fruit are cut off and thrown into the fire. So um, at this point, we might think, okay, so then what, uh, how can we bear fruit? And in Paul's letter to the Galatians, he lists a few of the fruits of the Spirit, uh, like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And these are uh, things that um, we always hear, but uh, we have a hard time practicing sometimes. And they're not really any big things, but maybe with our interactions with our classmates or our colleagues, our parents, our family, uh, or in other relationships, uh, maybe there are ways that we can kind of um, show those fruits and uh, maybe we can express those things. And um, another um Thing that this passage focuses on is uh, it answers another question that we have. Uh, we always say, okay, so what about those people over there? They're not doing uh, everything that the Bible says, or they're not um, following these rules or bearing fruit, but they're okay, so it must be okay for me too, right? But that's when um, this passage especially, like, uh, it gives a good message because uh, it reminds us that we're not like anybody else. Um, we're, we're called with a special purpose. And um, if like our only uh, purpose is to bear fruit. So um, it's important that we remember that our purpose is not the same as everybody else's. And we stick to um, uh, doing what is asked of us. 
So in these last few weeks of Lent, I just want to urge all of you guys to take a moment to maybe reflect on your day, on your activities, your priorities, um, your interests, and your goals, and um, take a moment to see and think if, um, if you are being um, fruitful or if we've become dormant. And um, let's all try to be uh, productive branches in, um, in God's garden uh, so that we can fulfill our mission. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week, and thank you. Thank you.